Worse still, his attacker, who had stabbed an innocent victim back in 2010, was deemed unfit for trial by French authorities. So he was let go, free to attack again. Shalom paid the ultimate price. And believe it or not, this time the killer was released after six months, deemed mentally unfit. And in January 2020, no one has a clue where he is. The Simon Wiesenthal Center released our top 10 2019 anti-Semitic and anti-Israel incidents a few weeks ago. Number four was the release of another murderer, a murderer of a beautiful French Jewish kindergarten teacher, Sarah Halimi, who was attacked in her own apartment and flung to her death by an assailant who, by his own admission, was chanting Quranic texts. He was recently released because he had smoked pot before the attack. Yesterday, or actually on Sunday, French Jews and others, outraged and fearful citizens, took to the streets of Paris to protest this outrage. In 2015, another Muslim with no prior history of mental illness was deemed unfit to stand trial for stabbing of Jews in Marseille. Initially released, the protest did lead for him to be jailed for four years. This French judiciary policy of ultimate appeasement of murderous anti-Semitism traces back to Abel Amas Tabu, who was deemed mentally unfit to stand trial for stabbing a Jew to death. He had no prior history of mental illness. Commissioners, it is the French judiciary that has exposed itself again and again as unwilling and unfit to protect French Jewry from violent anti-Semitism, even when law enforcement does its job. Left unchanged, such despicable policies endanger all Jews in France and merits the placing of France on your tier two watch list. Sweden. On the 81st anniversary of the November 9th Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, when German synagogues were torched by the Nazis, today's Nazis plastered stickers shaped like yellow stars on multiple Jewish sites in Sweden and Denmark. In Denmark, they were placed on private residences, and in Randers, 84 tombstones the Jewish cemetery were vandalized. Those same yellow stars appeared across Sweden including in the capital of Stockholm, where the Bayit Jewish Cafe near the Adat Yeshurun Synagogue, the Great Synagogue of Stockholm, and the Hillel School were all targeted. Elsewhere, Jewish buildings in the city of Helsingborg, where Jewish women were stabbed and severely injured earlier last year, and Norkenkog were also desecrated. A Jewish mother who sends her kids to the Hillel School in Stockholm declined to give her name in an interview, but said the following. It is very, very sad that it is so, and it is perhaps something that makes us sometimes think about moving to another country where it be easy, will be easier to be fully who we are. Nearly 10 years ago, the Simon Wiesenthal Center placed a travel advisory on Sweden's third largest city, Malmo, for failing to deal with incessant anti-Semitic incidents against its rabbi and small Jewish community. Very little has changed despite the government's recent announcement it will give a grant to better protect Jewish community facilities. Simply put, that may be too late. Media reports that the number of Jews in the city has rapidly decreased in the last 20 years and warned that the city's community might disappear entirely. A local Jewish teen described his experience living in the city this past summer saying, quote, uncertainty means that you cannot go to school with a visible Star of David because then there is a high risk of being threatened or that someone follows you from the school or even of being beaten. The Swedish National Council for Crime Prevention reported a record high 280 anti-Semitic incidents, a jump of 53% over their last audit. 
while Jews make up no more than one-fifth of one percent of Sweden's population, more than four percent of all hate incidents in the country target Jews. Shari Tinkman, acting group chief and preliminary investigations leader at Stockholm Police Democracy and Hate Crime Group, said police need to do more to understand Jewish culture. You want to know how clueless they are? It was the same Swedish police who gave permission to neo-Nazis to rally in the square named in memory of Raoul Wallenberg directly across from Stockholm's main synagogue. Sweden fails to protect its Jewish citizens and institutions and has failed to hold anti-Semites accountable for their actions in both public and private sectors, including at its famed and respected Karolinska Hospital. Sweden should be placed on the Commission's Tier 2 watch list. German official lamentations against anti-Semitism are not always matched by consistent broad-based actions. We've heard about the description of Yom Kippur, what happened around the synagogue in Halle. Only a miracle saved dozens of Jews from the bullets of a neo-Nazi gunman as they stood in prayer. Two other innocent people nearby who weren't Jews but deserve to be remembered today weren't so lucky. They were killed by the gunmen. Anti-Semitism in Germany is surging, and not only from the extreme right. Recently, hours after I met with the mayor of Berlin, an Israeli student was assaulted on the streets of the most important city in Central Europe, or maybe in all of Europe, his crime, speaking Hebrew in public. Jewish kids been bullied in schools, Jewish tourists accosted, the Wiesenthal Center and others have been urging Chancellor Merkel and the mayor of Berlin, Mr. Mueller, to declare Hezbollah a terrorist organization. This would cut them off from the financial support they enjoy from supporters in Germany and make it harder for them to further spread their hatred of Jews among young Muslims in that country. To date, unfortunately, Chancellor Merkel has refused ensuring that Germany's Jewish community be further endangered. We therefore call on the Commission to put Germany on your Tier 2 watch list. Finally, England. Days before the UK's last election, our center listed Jeremy Corbyn's led Labour Party as number one in a very crowded field of 2019 top anti-Semites. Thankfully, Corbyn resigned after historic a defeat of his party, the anti-Semitism he allowed to be unleashed within the Labour Party played a role in his political demise. Tragically, however, the injection of cancerous anti-Semitism into the mainstream of England's national political and social discourse will have long-lasting impact. Ugly anti-Semitic hate crimes have continued daily since Election Day. Given the close historic links between our two countries and cultures, it is important that the Commission carefully analyze the current situation and consider placing the UK on its watch list as well. In closing, the Wiesenthal Center urges the Commission to expand its consultation with Special Envoy Ilan Carr and to um, perhaps convene a future hearing in 2020 uh, in a European capital. Um, it's an important statement by us Americans, and I think we're uh, strong enough uh, and have enough moral backbone to know we'll be suffering the backlash immediately by saying, I'm going to quote you the ADL statistics of the U.S. Why did you cross the Atlantic? We're crossing the Atlantic because in addition to the problem, we have some solutions. Thank you.